Hey everybody, welcome to Page to Page and sit down, grab yourself a cup of coffee because today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite things in the world, reading. In this video, I'd like to cover um, my reading journey, uh, how I got into reading, some experiences I had with reading before I really fell in love with it. Um, I'm going to be talking about reading in schools, um, promotion of reading, stuff like that. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you a few books I've gotten over the past few days, as well as um, share with you an important update in my life. When I was a kid, I actually fairly enjoyed reading. Um, I remember reading um, a few young adult novels I really liked. I don't know if anyone remembers the I Survived series, but it was published by Scholastic, and I remember being, uh, oh, probably in elementary and reading those. I mean, those were the pinnacle of literature back then. I mean, really great series for kids to read. Um, there was another novel published by, I believe her name is Jennifer Golchenko, um, called Al Capone Does My Homework and Al Capone Does My Laundry. I absolutely adored the first book in that series. Can't remember the second one very well, but I loved that first book. Um, so I was really into reading. I read Gregor the Overlander, um, a series by Suzanne Collins. Uh, she wrote The Hunger Games, so Gregor the Overlander was kind of her series that didn't get as big, but I loved it as a kid. Um, I also read the Percy Jackson series, you know, that young adult fantasy series. That, and it, it's incredible to get young people to learn how to read. So it's not like I used to hate reading. But by the time I got to middle school, I really stopped. Um, it just, I didn't have time for it. I didn't pay any attention to reading. I don't know why, but I just stopped reading completely. And part of it might have been because I wasn't really connecting with what we were reading in school. The only book I remember us reading in middle school that I actually liked was Night by Ellie Wiesel. We read a lot of books on the Holocaust. My middle school English teacher was obsessed with the Holocaust. So we read a ton of books on the Holocaust. And um, you kind of get, I mean, this sounds bad to say, but you kind of get bogged down if you read so many books about the same event over and over again. So, um, But Night was incredible. I mean... If you haven't read Night by Ellie Wiesel, please pick it up. Do yourself a favor. It's the most chilling, haunting um, thing I've ever read from a Holocaust survivor. Uh, keep in mind, this man went through everything he talks about in his memoirs. It is chilling to the bone. Incredible book, and you should definitely read it. If you read one book about the Holocaust, it's got to be that one. Hands down, incredible. Um, but we also read Animal Farm in middle school. Now, we might have enjoyed Animal Farm if it was taught the right way, but we had to, like, were tested on the connections to, like, Russian politics within the book. There's tons of, you know, obviously it's a big metaphor for uh, the happenings within um, communist Russia at the time, but that's not how you get a middle schooler into reading, by making them go through all these PowerPoints about how this character is, you know, Trotsky and this character is Lenin. So it was really not taught in an effective way, in my opinion. Now, I do. I have read 1984 since, so I enjoyed it. So I might need to give Animal Farm, you know, another read through. I'm sure I would love it now, but I just kind of fell away from literature in middle school, and I really think that's when it started happening. In high school, I uh, kind of came back to loving literature a bit, but in a different way than you might think. Um, I started. I fell in love with poetry. I didn't really care for reading. I wasn't reading for fun. I would read what we had to read in school, and that was about the end of the day. But um, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it, I, but I love poetry. I loved reading um, poets. I loved Edgar Allan Poe. Poe is a writer that I've loved throughout my life, even in this period of when I wasn't reading at all. Um, so I love Poe, um, and I did so in high school. And there were a few other poets I really admired and loved. Um, you know, I, I thought it was a great art form. Now, one poet I did not love was Shakespeare, which is kind of funny because now I'm pretty fond of Shakespeare's plays. I've never been big on his sonnets, but I hated Shakespeare's sonnets, um, and I, I hated some of the plays we read. We read Romeo and Juliet, and we read um, Julius Caesar. Those are two terrible plays to get someone to love Shakespeare. We didn't read it. We, we read Macbeth, which was all right, but um, you gotta let, you gotta teach them Midsummer Night's Dream or, you know, Hamlet, you know, in a very engaging way, like, Julius Caesar will make no one ever want to read Shakespeare again. So I don't know why we were taught that um, book at all. I remember in high school, English um, 
reading The Great Gatsby, which I absolutely abhorred. I hated that book. Um, I thought Gatsby was the most insufferable character I had ever read about. Um, I, I, I still have not read the, reread the novel. Maybe I would like it if I reread it. But at the time in high school, I absolutely hated The Great Gatsby. And of course we had to watch, you know, the Leonardo DiCaprio movie or something or part of it. I, I couldn't stand it. The Crucible. We went over The Crucible. I did not like it whatsoever. Um, Arthur Miller isn't something you want to really teach to high schoolers, I don't believe. That might be a controversial opinion. Um, but I don't think that that's going to help you fall in love with literature is teaching them Arthur, Arthur Miller. I think that Arthur Miller is something you should probably read when you um, are more, uh, I don't know, maybe more well-read in literature. And, of course, you know, making a bunch of high schoolers point out all these historical connections is not always the best thing either. Not something that they're going to really appreciate at the time. You know, they're already learning so much in history class. Why are you trying to bring that to, you know, English class? I get it's important, but teach something else. <laughs> teach something more engaging. Um, where else did we read? We, we were at Skellig. I can't even remember what the story was about. Like, we, I got to a test, and there was a question about Skellig, and I didn't even remember reading it. Um, we read a few short stories. I remember The Most Dangerous Game, which was all right. I, I fairly enjoyed that one, I got to admit. Uh, not the best short story in the world, but it was all right. I, I do have to give credit for that one. At the end of the day, it's not like I didn't like my English teacher. I really liked my English teacher. She, she was a great person, great teacher. But I felt like she was chained down by the syllabus, you know, by the um, the course material that she was given. I don't think that making kids read a bunch of books that they probably won't even like is the way to teach literature. Um, I think more so... Having them pick a book that they would like, or maybe having the teacher help them pick out a book that they think that they would like. Letting the student, you know, write reports on books that they might have an interest in something about. Say there's that kid in class that loves basketball. Well, back when I even hated reading, I read a book on the Dream Team. I cannot remember the name of the book, but um, I picked that book up and I read about the Dream Team, and it was wonderful. I loved it. I finished it, you know, cover to cover. So it, you really have to... Um, Give kids something that, and I say kids, well, high schoolers, high school students, middle school students, whatever. You have to give them something that they're really going to enjoy. Um, another author I remember really liking, even when I didn't like reading, was Stephen King. I read The Shining. I tried to read um, The Stand. Yeah, no, but um, I I, um, I read um, I read The Shining and loved it. You know, I had heard about the movie. I wanted to read the book. So, The Stand isn't something you want to read as your first Stephen King novel, which I found out very quickly. Um, and interestingly enough, I have not gone back to Stephen King yet, which I probably need to do. So my first two years of college, I was still not really into reading. Um, I liked poetry, as I always did, but I ended up transferring schools. And when I was taking community college courses, uh, courses in between this period of transition for me, I took a literature class at Central Carolina Community College. And... It's funny enough because I didn't really care for the professor's opinion on literature, for his opinions, but the literature we studied in that class was phenomenal. William Faulkner, um, Flannery O'Connor, uh, of course Mark Twain, um, T.S. Eliot. We studied so many great writers in this course. I remember we read The Open Boat by Stephen Crane and I adored that story. We read so much good material, good literary stuff. And I started to like see why people were into it, and I really loved it. Um, a Rose Family by William Faulkner was a story we read, and it was incredible. It blew my mind. Good Country People by Flannery O'Connor. I mean, these short stories we were reading were phenomenal. And I went went through um, Huckleberry Finn. And it was like, wow, this like literature, these classics, they they there's something to them. Um, there's really something I can appreciate. And we even read a short story by Juno Diaz. Who was a contemporary writer, and I loved it. Um, there is good stuff out there, you know. That was the thought that I had. There, there, I see why people read now. Inspired by the class, and it was the pandemic, so I didn't really know what to do. So I just decided to pick up an old book I had, Cosmos by Carl Sagan, and I blazed through it, and I loved it. And I also read an old copy of 1984 I had. So I was starting to get into literature, and this is where I became a big reader. This was the origin of my love and passion for books. So I got through those, and I wanted more. 
um, I believe I read a copy, a whole copy of my my mother's old copy of um, Pride and Prejudice. Um, so I went on Amazon and I got two books by an author that I had always had an inside joke uh, with my friends at in high school, Vladimir Nabokov. Um, it was a weird inside joke. I'm not going to exploit it, but um, but I decided, you know what? I've heard a lot about Nabokov. I'm just going to take a shot in the dark. So I ordered two of his books, Pale Fire and Penin. And I read Penin first, and I went through it in about a week. And I w I've always been a slow learner up to this point. So, or I mean a slow learner, a slow reader up to this point. Maybe I am a slow learner. Um, but I read Penin, and it was amazing. So I went on to Pale Fire. It was even better. So I was like, wow, this is incredible. And that is really where it started with um, a few authors, Orwell, um, Nabokov. That is really where it took off. And I just started researching. Um, I, I went to Thomas Pynchon, who's a very complicated novelist. I went to him pretty early on. I got um, The Crying of Lot 49 and V. And I read Crying of Lot 49 in, um, in like a day. In a day, 24 hours. And I was done with it. And it was incredible. It blew my mind. It was hilarious. It was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. So I, then I read V, and V is, looking back on it, one of the best novels I've ever read. And I said that about a lot of novels, but it, it's easily in my top 15, which is saying a lot, you know, because I have a lot of favorite novels. So um, uh, it just expanded from there. Um, I read, started reading a ton of classics. Um, I've since read um, every one of Pinchon's books except Against the Day, and then Slow Learner, which is like his short story collection. Um I've read a ton more of Nabokov. I've started picking up Faulkner and reading some of his books, and he's become one of my favorite novelists. So my love for literature really exploded. And then um, I'd say in about November of last year, so 2021, I'd always had an interest in the Civil War. I started reading Civil War books. I um, can't remember which is, what's the first one I picked up, but um, I know my mom got a set of Shelby Foote's trilogy, which I still haven't read yet, but it inspired me, so I started picking up literature about that. And I found out I love military history. Uh, you know, World War II was next. So I started picking up all of these great books about different wars. And now I'm even expanding into other areas of history that aren't military history. So um, my reading journey has been very fulfilling. I, I've loved I've picked up books now. I, I've loved that this is a new hobby of mine. I've always been a big music fan. So now in addition to music, I have books, um, two of my favorite things in the world. Uh, anyone that knows me will attest to that. So it's been a really great experience. I love hitting up used bookstores. I love talking um, to other book lovers and discussing literature and nonfiction and who's the best author for this category and all that. And I love hitting up library sales, getting those cheap discounts and on books. And um, now it's one of my goals to build my own library. You know, I, I have a, I've had a decent start for as long as I've been doing it. Um, I'm still young, so... Um, but when I'm older, you know, I want to have a pretty substantial library. So, you know, if, if you have a question about something, you're an author, you can you go up and pick something out of the shelf and it's right there. Um, I'd love to pass down my books to my kids one day, um, you know, or having them all be donated to maybe a bookstore that I love. So, um, it is a very fulfilling hobby, I do believe. Well, if you stuck around this far, thanks for listening to my rant about, um, literature and my journey into books. Um... So now I'd like to transition and show you a few of the books I've picked up in the past days from Second and Charles, which is one of my favorite bookstores, um, and more on Second and Charles later. So um, I'm going to start out with the fiction. I got um, four fiction books. Well, um, one of them is a poetry book, and technically, and then I have two history books. And the last book I show you, I am very excited about. So to start off off with, here's a classic. Um, one of my friends, uh, Mackenzie, has been recommending this author to me for probably about a year, and I, me being stubborn as I am, I hadn't picked him up yet. But I finally got in a copy of one of his stories, and that is John Steinbeck. So I picked up Mice, uh, um, Mice and Men. Yeah, of Mice and Men. Can you believe that? Of Mice and Men. <laughs> one of his most popular books, a classic. Um, a lot of people read this in high school. I um, either fortunately or unfortunately did not because I might have hated it if I read it in high school, but um, maybe I would have loved it and picked this up sooner. But yeah, I love this copy. It's, you know, very small. I mean, this could fit in 
just about anywhere. You can just take it with you and read it. And it's got that crazy, like, vintage cover on it. <laughs> it was just really uh, intriguing, just the way it looks. And, yeah, the pages are have yellowed a bit, but, like, inside it's very readable. It's not very yellow at all. So, dated book, but, I mean, it was, like, less than two bucks. So, I figured, why not pick it up? Um, second, I got this from the discount section. It was only two bucks. Um, Baldolino by Umberto Eco. This is um, Echo's fantasy novel, um, I believe. So I'm reading one of his books right now and liked it a lot. So for two bucks, you can't really go wrong with the author you already enjoy. Next up, um, we have a classic of the Western canon, um, Paradise Lost by John Milton. John Milton was a, um, I believe he was a mystic or something. He was a big poet um, back in who knows when. But this is an epic poem he wrote. Um, very inspired by the Bible, a very biblical type uh, poem. And um, so I believe it's based on the um, origin story, the Garden of Eden, um, Adam and Eve, and of course the um, Satan in the disguise as a serpent. So me being a Christian and um, having been read the Bible my entire life, I thought the premise was very interesting. And when it comes to paperbacks, I really love the Penguin Classics. I feel like they're very well made. And this was like $3.50 um, total cop, if you know what I mean. Next up, I mentioned him earlier, one of my favorites, William Faulkner. Um, I have read a few of his more famous novels and short stories. I've read um, Light in August, which is one of the most disturbing endings I've ever read, but it was brilliant. I've read... Um, Sound and Fury, again, amazing book. And As I Lay Dying, which is, in my opinion, close to a perfect novel. I mean, and it surprises me some people read that in high school. Like, that is a good English teacher. <laughs> well, maybe not, because I could see a lot of people hating it, especially in high school. But, um, you know, that's that's incredible that high schoolers are reading that. I, th I think that might be, like, you know, I think you need to be, <laughs> um, I think you need to read a lot before you read that, you know. At least read Rose for Emily and... Um, or something else. But Absalom, Absalom, one of his more famous novels, uh, one of his well-regarded novels, but also incredibly <laughs> confusing. I mean, let's see if I can just open it up and just look at the block of text. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, I've heard it has the longest sentence in the English language or something like that. I don't know if it's true, but if it is, comment. And if you love William Faulkner, I do too. Leave a comment. Talk about William Faulkner. He is great. Now on to the two history books I got. Now I saw this next one on Bill Rutenberg's channel. He's one of my favorite booktubers. And I was like, I have to get this. So surprise, surprise, I saw it, picked it up. This is The Class of 1846 by John G. Um, Wall. So I, I've heard good things about this book. A very fascinating topic. Um, this class that had such great leaders of the Civil War. Well, first they fought in the Mexican-American War. And um, so they got even closer. They were like brothers, as this book says. Um, and then they end up um, joining each side of the American Civil War. And next thing you know, these brothers who went to school together and already fought in the war together are now fighting against each other. This is why the Civil War is so fascinating to so many people. Because you have countrymen that knew and loved each other taking ar up arms against each other. I mean... It's such a fascinating historical event. But some of the um, people included in the class of 1846 are some of the most well-regarded generals of the Civil War and some ill-regarded. Um, of course, you have Stonewall Jackson, who is one of the most well-regarded generals of the Civil War. Um, I don't believe he actually, I think he was maybe in like 17th place in the class or something like that. Um, you also have the infamous General um, McClellan, who is not very well regarded uh, for his actions on the Peninsula Campaign and not being very aggressive in the Civil War. He believe I believe he, yeah, he was second in his class. So he placed very high at um, West Point, so he was well regarded. Um, and it has a list of all of, in the front of the book, of all of the people who were members of his class. You have someone named John Adams, which is kind of funny, um, Brigadier General for the Confederacy. Um, some other names that you might be familiar with, um, of course, A.P. Hill, a famous Confederate general, um, kind of divisive. I, I'm personally a fan of Hill. Um, you have Pickett as well, famously, or Pickett's Charge. 
And uh, interestingly enough, he was ranked 59, and I believe that's pretty close to last. I mean, it might have been out of 60. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but he's another big player that was in this class. And, of course, um, Camdus Wilcox, who was a Confederate Major General. So you have a lot of um, important Civil War characters that take the front uh, forefront in this book and were a member of the class. Um, so now moving on to the last book I got. Now, this book was $15, and that's a lot more than most books in this store are. But it really caught my eye because I was looking at biographies of Napoleon. There was one in there, but a lot of people didn't like it because they felt it was too harsh on Napoleon. So I came across this book, and I was like, it looks interesting. It's a little beat up. But I looked it up online, and it was like crazy expensive. Like I'm talking, I was seeing like $50. There was a few that were maybe like 30 but and everyone's talking about how expensive the book is, but how worth it it is. Well, 15 bucks, I had to pick it up. And as I've been looking through it, I've realized it was a great decision. So this is probably the coolest thing I out of this haul. And I saved the best for last, of course. This is The Campaigns of Napoleon by David G. Chandler. As you can see, this book, you know, Dust Jacket's seen better days. I mean, it's definitely an old book. It's been well-loved. But it is an absolutely massive account of it, apparently every battle Napoleon had ever been in. This records it all. It records his mindset, his strategy, his maneuvers, all of that good stuff. And it has tons of, one second, crazy maps in there of all of his positions and uh, movements and tactics. And it's just incredible volume. Um, everyone that studies military history eventually gets to Napoleon and... What better way to do it than this beautiful book? And it even has a, if I can get this open, one second here, it has a pull-out map in the middle of it um, showing some of his uh, movements. So that is, you know, incredible. I, I am very happy with this volume. Um, as you can see, the binding is very loose. I don't know, if it stays like this, I'm fine with it. I'm not gonna be rough housing it with it or anything. But um, it is a little, it is very well aged, but if it starts separating, I figure I could try to fix it a bit. And, you know, you can take a stick and put some glue in there to make the binding a little tighter. So it might need some TLC, but um, here it is. I love that little design on the cover. Here it is without the jacket. So, yeah, um, well, that is the book haul and put a note to end on. So who knows when I'll get around to these, but... I am itching to get to that Napoleon book. So if you've stuck around this far, I would like to thank you for watching the video. Um, I guess I'll end this video on a bit of a personal note, a note about what's going on in my life right now. So um, part of the reason I've been at that bookstore, which is like about 30, 35 minutes away from me, is that I have actually been applying for a job at Second and Charles. So um, today I had my interview with Second and Charles, and I think it went really good. I think it went great. I felt good about it. Um, so um, right now I'm in the process of working through um, and hopefully I'll get hired and I'll get to work at, you know, my favorite bookstore. So I, I'm really excited about that. I'll give a few updates on how it goes. Um, but yeah, I, I, I know that it's just going to be so rewarding to um, help people find books they love, to help them find their next best book and to enjoy the process of finding that book. So, you know, it's a job I'm going to be taking very seriously if I do end up getting it. It's going to be um, a great learning experience for me, and it's going to be an opportunity to be around books and uh, music and, you know, all that stuff, video games and stuff I love. So, uh, yeah, that's just a quick update on what's going on with me. I mean, do you think I dressed up this nicely for a YouTube video? <laughs> but, um, as always, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for supporting page to page, um, leaving your comments, likes, the reviews. It's all it's all great. Um, I, I have enjoyed making these videos, and for the foreseeable future, I I'll continue doing so. I can't guarantee that I'll be you know putting out videos like constantly, but um, you know when inspiration strikes or I have something to post about. I'll do it. So um, thank you guys so much um, for watching. And I will see you later.